Hey there everybody, welcome to Raw Reviews and today I'm going to be looking at the Samsung Galaxy Note 8. So as a disclaimer, I did have this phone for the past two weeks. Uh, it's been my daily driver. I'm excited to bring you the review for this phone. So let's start it off by looking quickly at the design of the phone. So on the sides here you have your volume up and down button, you have your Bixby button, which I do have turned off. I do have my power button here, my S Pen, USB Type-C, I know it's hard to see, and then the headphone jack and yes it does have a headphone jack so build quality the phone feels absolutely great in your hands um, I really like the form factor of the phone it feels really like it's very thin and actually the placement of the fingerprint sensor here makes it a lot easier than the Galaxy S8 fingerprint sensor uh, especially the plus version so let's talk about the performance and software of the phone really quickly so um, I've always been a big fan of pure Android, of the Google Pixel, of the Nexus phone alliance, just because it was always faster, it was always cleaner. Uh, but I do have to say that with this phone here, the Samsung Galaxy user interface, their software um, is really, 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 really good actually. They did a really good job of making it fast, making it smooth, and making it as comparable actually to a Nexus or a Pixel phone. And that's actually a problem for Google because I think this is a better phone in terms of features for customers. The Google Pixel phones are very nice for basic Android, and yeah, I am going to say basic Android. Um, it is going to give you a nice, fast experience, but it's not as feature-filled as this here, and we'll talk a little bit about some of the features of this phone just now. Performance is very fast, I'm just going to open up a few apps for you to see. I do have the data turned off right now, so nothing can actually load. So as you can see guys, it is quite smooth. Now let's take a do some multitasking. Let's open up everything else that we just opened. You see, everything was closed beforehand. Let's look at the clock. Let's switch to Netflix. Let's switch to the calculator, the phone. And as you can see, everything is buttery smooth. And since we're here, I want to show you a little helpful trick. So, if you hold down the multitasking button, well, actually, you have to have an app open first. So let's have the contacts open or the phone app open. Holding down the contacts button, the sorry, not the contacts button, the multitasking button here and I'm going to show you this little box and this box is customizable so let's say I want to choose this area here to show I'm going to press done and I'm going to go ahead and open another app I'm going to open an app from my app list actually so nothing on top here I'm going to open my calendar for some reason if you ever want your phone on your calendar and you can see it's two apps running completely in multitasking and split screen and that works with all the apps. Um, it's a very nice feature, actually a lot helpful than you might think. Um, it's really nice to have. So talking a little bit more about the software, um, this is the king of customization for Android so far from all the phones that I've used. I absolutely love making this phone mine by customizing it. So here's some of the things that you can do. Um, it's not gonna be end up, this is gonna be just a quick look on some of the things that you can do. If you hold down the screen, go to wallpapers and theme, you can completely change how this phone looks like from the core apps to just wallpapers to icons. So right now we're at Samsung themes, let's view all. I'm sorry, so this is actually the wallpaper section. So let's choose this wallpaper here. Home and lock screen, set. And you can choose a different lock screen for the home and wallpaper. Let's go to themes. So one of the best things about this one, I think, is the themes. And if you don't know what themes are, basically themes change the way your core apps looks like and the way uh, the icons of some of the apps look like. So let's take a look at this. So this is how the phone app looks on this current theme that I have. Let's, let me change that so to show you a difference. So I'm going to go to themes. I'm going to show you one of my three favorite themes on the store right now. Scroll down to black onyx here let's apply it i'm 
Now you can see the icons changed. The apps themselves changed on the inside. Your your uh, notification panel here. The note the the change as well. Let's look at the Play Store. Well, this is the app itself doesn't change because it's it's one of the apps. But the core apps do change looks. So let's look at the calculator. It looks different now. I actually really like this look. Now let's go back into the settings or the themes menu. I want to show you something else. You can also change your icons. So your icons don't have to be the exact same thing as your theme. So I really like the black look here, but I don't like the theme, the icons here. So what I'll do is I'll go wallpapers, icons, my icons. So these are the ones that I downloaded. And there's a couple of ones that I want to show to all the Google enthusiasts, the Android purists there. So you have pixel icons and you have their material design icons. So I'm going to choose the pixel icons, apply it. And now I have Google pixel icons. So you can see how much variations you can do. And there's a little bit, even more. Let's go to wallpapers and themes. They're always on display. So let's look at my always on display right now and give it a second. So I have a line here. I'm not too sure if you can just see that as much. So I have a line. And I want to change that into something else. I can change it to a custom picture if I like, or I can download a pre one, uh, a pre-made one from the store. So I'm going to download, I'm going to apply this motorcycle one, apply the clock and image. and it's been applied. Let's turn it off and see the screen. Now it's strange for you to see, but here is my always on motorcycle. So that's kind of the, some of the basics of the software and this extends to everything. This phone is so customizable to your liking. You can change your ringtone um, to anything you download. Uh, you're not restricted to the ones that you have your phone and it's very easy to do since it's Android. Um, you can change your uh, widgets here. You have multiple widgets you can download. Um, it's just, I, I really like the way the software works. The combination of Android and the Samsung um, UI it used to be called TouchWiz. I'm very sure it has a different name now. I'm not too sure what it is, but I really like this phone. And the performance of it, honestly, is comparable to a Pixel phone. Um, I've seen some of the comparable comparison videos and it's only like a split second difference. And to me, I'd rather get more customization for that split second. And really, in your day-to-day -day life, in their usage, this is gonna be really helpful. The things that you're gonna be able to do with this phone is so much more. So let's talk a little bit about the S Pen. So this is really funny actually. The way I've ended up using my S Pen was more of a pointer than anything else. And you might be thinking to yourself, well, why you have your finger? It's true. But once you get used to scrolling and doing things with the S Pen, to go back and do it with your finger, you actually notice that you have really fat fingers, that you actually take a big chunk of the screen. Well, this leaves it all open. That's an unexpected feature. And I think actually this is the way I've mostly used the S Pen, is just to scroll the web, scroll, through my pictures, scroll through anything, to select things, it's actually much more accurate to use your S Pen. Now, there are a few special S Pen features that you can do. So if on the other side here, you have this carousel that pops up when you take your pen, S Pen out. And you have different options, different things you can do. So I'm gonna bring the phone in a little bit closer so you guys can see. Let it... So you can view all your notes, you can create a note which is, you can do any note you like. Save it, Let's click back. Smart Select, I've actually used this feature quite a bit. So basically this is another way to take screenshots, but it can be specific spots on the screen. So let's say I just wanna take this here. And that's it. So this whole, I can save, I can save it, I can share it. I can send it, I can edit it, I can draw more on it, I can do more. So let's see. So magnify, basically, this when you hover over something, 
it's just kind of making a visor screen and you can choose how much magnification you want here. So 300. So you can see. It's very, very cool and actually it is helpful. I did use it to, with on a website that I had a little bit of trouble seeing some of the, um, the writing on and it's really, really good. So there's a whole bunch of things. These live messages, live messages. I never use live messages. It's kind of one of those things that are there. They're not really helpful. Um, but it's nice to have. So first off, let's turn off this. Oh, so let's change the color first. Let's make it white. Done, and it saves it. And then you can send that to somebody as an animated um, as an animated message, basically. Um, it's nice to have. Will you actually use it? Depends on you. Personally, I never do. But it's a nice little feature. This is actually one of the only few features that I don't think are really helpful in this one. Um, let's take a look at this quickly. So you have a few other things that you can go through. This, they're quite useful, most of them. Uh, this is really nice. I really like, oh, you need internet. I really like this app here the gallery or not the gallery app the coloring app basically it's like a little coloring book it gives you a whole bunch of pictures you can go through and you just color the, the pictures um it's a good little little time waster if you will so other than that um i'll just give you quickly my final thoughts of the phone so personally to me this is hands down the best android phone that has come out this year i think it's better than the google pixel xl2 google pixel xl on the Google Pixel 2, I think it's better than the S8 and the S8 Plus. And for anybody that says it's the same phone, no, it's not. Um, I've personally used the S8 Plus for quite a while before this phone, and I did not like it. I didn't like it for a few things. There was always this kind of bugginess to the phone that I don't see with this phone. Um, the fingerprint sensor on the uh, S8 Plus, is, I thought it was terrible. This is so awkward but it's better because of the position of it. I do actually use the fingerprint sensor with this phone. The other phone, I had it turned off. Um, I think the combination of Android with the Samsung interface on this phone is what makes it so special and makes it so unique. Um, I never thought I could say this, but I actually prefer the Samsung phones right now over the Google Pixels. And I have a Google Pixel XL, uh, the first generation, and I absolutely love that phone. I think this is better. Um, this hands down took the crown. So one thing I'm going to talk about quickly is Bixby. Now I'm going to be completely honest. Um, I found Bixby extremely annoying. It's basically this button here and it is your assistant from Samsung. Now every other reviewer has said it. It sort of sucks and it really does suck. So thankfully at the time of this review, Samsung did release an update that you can turn this button off, which is good but also kind of, it sucks. Because even though this button is turned off and you can't use Bixby, it's still there for no reason. Um, it's just, just a button that does nothing right now. I wish Samsung also releases another update that basically makes your remap of just whatever you like to maybe your, um, your volume settings. Wouldn't it be so cool to just press, have this go on silent or regular? There are a couple of apps that do that, but their problem is it requires you to have this button turned on uh, and Bixby still launches. So just, just kind of thoughts on Bixby. It's there. If you want to use it, you can. Personally, I recommend just turning this off. Don't even worry about it. It'll just be basically a dead button for now unless somebody releases some sort of root or uh, method of, of activating another option without having to activate Bixby as well. So Bixby is annoying. Don't use it. Everything else is great about this phone. So, thanks guys, thanks for watching. Um, this is my Samsung Galaxy Note 8 review. Uh, please subscribe for more videos. We're gonna have the iPhone 10 unboxing and the iPhone 8 review coming up next with some of the uh, comparison videos for the two. Thanks for watching guys.